Hello folks, I'm Abfielder and this is the home of Completely Average Minecraft, where I play Minecraft like a normal person. I plan big exciting builds and deliver unfinished mediocrity. This is episode number two. In the last episode I made a few childish jokes. If you thought that was too many, then I apologise now. I suspect in an episode where I show you my gigantic hole, I may beat last week's count. Anyway, let's dive right in. On days 100 to 103, and if there is one thing I hate about Minecraft, it's mining. I'm okay with crafting though. More specifically, I dislike slow mining. It's okay when I've got efficiency 5 and beacons everywhere, so the first job today is to fix that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build ENXO4s with a skeleton farm. It's quick and easy to build. The only drawback for me is it requires turtle eggs and, well, I'm in a desert. There are no turtles. There are no way to get turtles eggs. So I'm going to build it without those turtle eggs and hope that the rates are still good enough. And by the end of day 103, I've got the spawning platform in place. So now all I've got to do is get the portals in place and it's pretty much done. Days 104 to 107. With the spawning platform in place, my next job was to get onto the nether ceiling. Take a bit of ladder and ender pearl and voila. Breaking the bedrock for easy access is nice and simple. You rebind the right mouse button to your keyboard, place down a piston, some TNT and a trap door, and job done. I'd love to show you, but this idiot forgot to press record, so you'll just have to take my word for it that I didn't cheat. I didn't. Once on the ceiling, I was able to take a quick look at the spawning platform, and it looks like this thing is going to work pretty well, even without those turtle legs. Once the upper portals were all in place, then it was time to test this bad boy. And I have to say, the rates were pretty good considering the time it took to build. I may never have to build a more advanced version. That is perfect. Days 109 to 117, having killed a great number of wither skeletons, I needed to do something with them so I could get to work on the next project. So that thing is taking those skulls and turning them into beacons. Of course, I'm not going to do that properly. I'm too scared. What I'm going to do is dig under the end platform, stick some obsidian down, and then you've got yourself a nice, safe little wither killer. Put those beacons down, and then it's time to start working on my deep, dark hole. That's what she said. By that, I mean making a slime farm. So for the majority of this period was spent, well, mining. And mining. And more mining. And fixing my tools. And then more mining. I did take a small break here and there to do the unthinkable. And well, I lit up some caves. Anyone that's played Minecraft with me for five minutes knows two things about me. Number one, I'm messy. And number two, you are likely to get creepered at my builds and... Well, I consider it your fault. You really should have been aware of your surroundings. At the end of day 119, well, I think it's fair to say I was getting a little bit tired of mining. Days 123 to 126. As I said, completely sick of mining, I decided it was time to do something else and put the resources from my hole to good use. That's what she said. See, I've been living in the open air now for 123 days and I felt it was time to build me a nice little place to settle down. So I went into my creative world and I designed a rather nice little desert house with a bed just big enough for one. Since I'm all alone. Anyway, back to Minecraft. This does lead me on to a more serious point. Recording 100 days of Minecraft, editing the footage down and then trying to make a script that's, you know, in any way fun and engaging is more work than I can realistically cope with doing an episode per week. So I am planning on making these episodes release once every two weeks. Anyway, back to the house. I'm rather pleased with this effort, actually. I use a website, 3D Models website, a fellow player, Bonehead, put me onto it, and like I got a model of a desert house, so I, I got that picture, and then I worked from that to create this really nice build. I'll put a link to that website down in the description below. But in true average Minecrafter style, although the house looks pretty, we're not going to do anything silly, you know, like nice little gardens and paths and things like that. We'll put that off for another day. Days 126 to 130, with the distraction done, it was back to the slime farm. I did, however, have a brainwave. And I know, I know, I was due one. See, I was gonna dig that slime farm all the way down to bedrock, but actually that doesn't make a lot of sense. You see, I spend most of my time at the surface, and at the surface, bedrock in most places is out of my despawn sphere so actually the farm would be generating zero per hour so instead what i'm going to do is dig down to about y equals minus 10 that way it's going to work when i'm in my house and when i'm in most places in the village going about my day-to-day -day business so days 126 to 130 as you can see on the screen were 
yeah, more mining. Days 130 to 133. With my mining days behind me, it's time to start building the spawning platforms. Then go up to Y equals 40. We won't go all the way up there in one go. And they're nice and simple. As you can see, we're just using stone and stone brick. We'll put a bit of glowstone in there. And we leave a free gap at either side for the slimes to fall down. And if you're a smart aleck and you notice that I've left a one gap on the other two sides, then all will be revealed further on in this video. Days 133 to 136. If you were expecting me to continue with the slime farm, then you are damn wrong. You see, the calling card of the average Minecraft player is their inability to concentrate on one build to completion or, you know, plan in advance. You see, I'd like to make the walls of that slime farm look pretty and I don't want to work too hard on it. So here's the plan. Green concrete matches the slime. Genius, right? Right? I don't even have to convert it, I just place it down, then I just chuck some water in the hole. So for this, I need another farm. This time I'm going to use Raiseworks Gravity Block Jupy. See, it works nicely, it needs a little bit of a tweak for 1 to 18 and above. It's not the quickest, but for the quickest I need honey, and for honey, I need bees. And for bees, I need trees, and I am 133 days in with not a sapling in sight. Still, the sand jupe is a pretty quick build. Now all I need to do is a chunk loader and then some form of collection system. A is 136 to 139. So with that build, it's time for that chunk loader. For this, I'm gonna use Dark's version two chunk loader. I've used V1 and it works perfectly. He promises this one is even easier to build. By the way, for all farms and stuff like this I use, I'll put links down in the description. So with the chunk loader built, I head into the end to build, well, a collection system. And this may be the laziest collection system I've ever built. You see, what I do is I let it drop on the floor, then I pick it up and manually stuff it in a shulker. And also at this time, I noticed a slight error. You see only three dupers are working. So the way a chunk loader works is it loads up the chunk it's in and then the chunks immediately surrounding it. And I've got a little bit unlucky here. I think this is the first time this has ever happened to me, but the furthest duper away from the chunk loader is actually in a different chunk altogether. It's too far away. Still, that's the job for later. And with this concrete, hopefully I have enough for the slime farm. Days 139 to 144 were spent mining out where the walls need to go since, well, I forgot to do that. What did I tell you about the average Minecraft run planning? Anyway, once I'd done that, then it was a case of just sticking the concrete in. There are two very contrasting feelings you can get in Minecraft. There's A, that feeling of elation you get, when you have just the right amount of blocks to complete a project. And then there's B, that feeling of utter despair when you're just a few blocks short. Can you guess which feeling I got? If you guessed A, you're an idiot. As it was, I was a few stacks short of where I needed to be. So I needed to do a little bit of duping and then I could finish the walls. Days 144 to 147. With the walls finally in place, we could do one of the most satisfying jobs in all of Minecraft. We convert our concrete powder into concrete. Effort one didn't exactly go that well, it wasn't all that satisfying, but efforts two, three, and four, well, they got the job done. Next up is the collection system. What we do here is a hopper rail collecting thing that we make four wide. Above that, we have a three wide strip of magma blocks, and then we just offload it into a nice simple hopper and loader collection system. Jobs are good. And Days 147 to 149 were spent working with the most deadly mob in all of Minecraft, the Iron Golem. Thankfully, since these are ones I'm creating, I'm pretty sure there is no way even I can die to them. Put them in the new homes to attract the slimes onto the magma blocks, and then we have a fully functioning farm. As you can see, I haven't done all the layers, but as long as the bottom layer is done, I can then just come back to this when I can be bothered. Read into that. Never. Days 149 to 151. Firstly, we're at the halfway point. Yay! I'm doing a little celebration dance, but you can't see it. For this period of time, I went back to the creeper farm. To keep me in a supply of rockets up to now, every so often I go creeper hunting, and as careful as I am, there are a few creeper holes around the place. So here's what I'm thinking. If I put the center in first, then the killing chamber, I can get this farm functioning and then add layers as I feel like it. I'm seeing a theme here. Days 152 to 157. I've been having a problem with dropping frames and I'm pretty sure I know what the cause is. I'm, I'm very, very sorry for this folks, but I'm afraid it had to be done. There were hundreds in there. 
Anyway, honestly, you know those days in Minecraft where you just lose all motivation? Well, I took day 152 off. I spent it fishing. It was nice. It relaxed me. And plus, I do actually need those fish to breed the cats, so it wasn't time wasted. After that, I went back to the creeper farm and put the water in the central tube like so. In fact, this might be the best way to build this farm. I might need to do an updated tutorial. This is my design, if you don't know. With the water in, I brewed up some potions so I could uh, get some of the uh, bre water breathing potions and put the iron bars in. Finished up the killing chamber, put the soul sand in, and then I could get some of that sweet, sweet gunpowder. There is only one layer of 31 in at the moment, but still it's easier than hunting for the creepers at night. Days 158 to 161. I've just realized I missed my 40 days and 40 nights joke that I stole off Bonehead. Damn it. I haven't seen a wandering trader yet this episode and that would have been perfect anyway. So fed up of mining, fed up of crafting, I went off exploring. My mission, sheep and trees, both of which means villages. On the way though, I did find this really cool area that might be good for a base later on in the series, so we'll keep a note of that. Then I hear a rich vein of form. Firstly, I found cows. I don't really need them at this point, but it's nice to know I have options. Then I found that single biome worlds have some interesting terrain. Have this island village and this island outpost. Not sure what they're protecting. Cool, huh? Then I did it. I found trees, oak saplings to be precise. I'm so happy, 160 days and I have three tree saplings. Buoyed by my su success, <laughs> I then found sheep. Yes, sheep. I can make beds that I also don't need. I'm sure I'll need wool for something. And I even found a horse. So that was three days well spent. Days 161 and 162, and surprisingly, I spent growing oak trees. Placed in between these flowers, each sapling has about a 5% chance of containing a beehive. Eventually, I got one, and that was it. I had bees, trees, and sheeps, as the title of this episode suggests. I just went to check out the slime farm, which was doing pretty well. Days 164 to 166 were spent adding layers at the creeper farm. I don't know what happened to the two missing days. Fishing, I suspect. Days 166 to 171 were spent adding more layers to the creeper farm and then convincing a villager to sell me frost walker so I could make an ice farm. If you already see the issue with this plan, then let me tell you now that in 20 days time, I too am going to know what that issue is. Days 171 to 177, I want to expand my villager trading. So firstly, I'm going to need some crop farms. Normally I'd stack them, but it's quite nice seeing the greenery in the desert. So I'm making them one layer high and I'm going to rig the lights over the top. During this, however, my second wandering trader arrived. Selling goods I either already had or could easily obtain. I think you know what happens next. Still, back to the carrot farm. Looks okay, and I have a collection system. Days 178 to 183, I moved the villagers into the farm, and then I nearly learned a very costly lesson in why I should light up and finish my builds. Though, let's be honest, if I haven't learned the lesson at this point, I probably never will. Then I added more layers to the creeper farm. I'd like to tell you how many I have, but I haven't counted. It's still less than 10 layers though. Days 185 to 189. I wanted to get the sheep back to the base so I could do a wool farm at some point. So I set about tunneling my way through the nether to where I found them with the intention of using leads to get them back. Now, given I don't bother with the walls on my tunnels when they're over lava at this point in time, this seems rather dangerous. So, not for the first time this episode, I had a brainwave. I used rails, and then at the main pool, I used an activator rail just to shove the sheep back into the overworld. And I have to say, it was easy. A little too easy, if you ask me. Anyway, by the end of day 189, I had three sheep back at base. Days 189 to 200. Do you remember about 20 days ago, I told you about the Frostwalker boots and my plans for a little ice farm? Here's where I found out the issue with my plan. You see, Frostwalker boots don't generate normal ice that you can mine. No, 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 no. They generate a block called frosted ice that drops absolutely nothing. Dough. 
So that led to my final build of the episode that's not really complete, but it's a wandering trader farm, which is basically just a platform in the air with a bell in the middle. And like an idiot, I didn't build it anywhere near, you know, like my carrot farm or things like that. An absolute muppet. Anyway, once I built that, what I then did was went AFK for the last 10 days and I got zero wandering traders. I believe if I AFK overnight, I will end up with about four or five wandering traders, which would be quite nice. But anyway, that brings me on to the end of today's episode. If you skipped part of the episodes, then let me tell you again that actually I'm going to be doing these episodes once every two weeks. It's not feasible to do 100 days of Minecraft, edit the footage, create a script and finalize a video all in one week. Well, not if I want to keep my real job, do my virtual Route 66 challenge and have some semblance of a real life. Hopefully you understand. <laughs> If you enjoyed the video, then please tick that like button, subscribe to the channel, and if you want a completely free to play on Survival World, I have two. Come join my Discord. Anyway, folks, that's all for now. I'm Abfielder. Goodbye.